What's up everybody, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today you will have to excuse me, my voice is deep, I have a cold, I'm getting over a cold, it sucked. But, I wanted to make a video this week about topology. Uh, it's a question I get asked so many times, and it would be really difficult to do an entire video just based on all the different ways that topology can be changed and adjusted and worked with to properly help you build sub D models. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to start a video series where I go over the different ways that you can change your topology and fix your topology and do things correctly instead of doing things maybe the traditional way that you were taught in school like I was, and how you can overall reduce and optimize your models for better future workflows as well as just better topology. Without further ado, make sure that you subscribe and like the video because you don't want to miss any of these topology tips. And if you are interested, you can support me and my channel on Patreon. It helps all the funds raised there go towards the channel and help just kind of make things better here for everybody. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so one of the most confusing things about topology is where do you even start? How do you get to good topology? How do you uh, change your model and how do you support your edges and things like that without completely wrecking things and making things like really complex? So for the first video in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to look at right angles. I know most models are going to use these in some way. I use them all the time, but they're also really important because this is going to show you how to properly support these without both increasing your polygon count or introducing things like distortion or bumps or anything like that that are going to cause you issues down the line especially when you're trying to get your final render out you get that nice shiny pbr texture on there and you look at it and there's a dent or there's a fold or something weird so let's look at how we would do this and we'll work through each step so looking at this right now we have our main model so this would be what you would model out and we're now ready to support this so traditionally what we would do is we would go through and just add our edge loops and call it good that works right it gives us a good result if i hold three to smooth it does really well. The main thing we want to avoid here though is the sheer amount of geometry that we've added into this. You can see that we've added an edge loop here, edge loop here, 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 here. It's just, it's a lot of geometry. And while it may not seem like a lot when we're talking about like how many faces compared to the second version of this we're dealing with, it is actually going to be something that's really important down the line for keeping your projects really efficient and clean. So we're looking at this. The way that we want to do this, the way that we kind of strive to do this is like this. You can see we have much less geometry. When we smooth it, we get the same exact result. The difference is, is we're dealing with much less polygons than we are on this one. So if I unsmooth these, we'll go ahead and just turn this off and then I'm gonna open up the three smooth. So generally three smooth, what we do in Maya when we hit three is we're doing like a smooth preview. So you can see how each one of these models holds up with that. Uh, obviously the first one kind of screwed, doesn't really do anything. Second one, it works, it works totally fine. The third one works great. Both of these technically work. One of these is technically the way you should be doing it. And that's this one. So why would we wanna do it this way? So to kind of give you an example on why we would wanna do that this way, let's look at this and we'll turn on our sub D layer. So again, similar result. I've just added a blend material to this just to make sure that we can see any weird artifacts that we may be getting. Um, and we don't have any, which is, Perfect, that's what we're striving for. So you can see, you get the same result with three smooth. Obviously things are gonna be a little bit different because you're actually adding the geometry now, you're subdividing your model, but you can see how the original model, it fails. Uh, this is obviously a really bad result, we don't want this. The other one works great, you know, it looks fine. But look at this. So we have this massive area of density here. This is what happens when you go through and you just add edge loop, edge loop, edge loop. When we look at this area, we can see how dense it is. So the issue with this is because we've added so many edge loops, the more you subdivide that, the more those small clusters of edge loops will subdivide within themselves. So we're creating these really patchy kind of gross things. So if I go ahead and look at this and I go smooth it again, we can see now we're starting to get this really dense kind of build up here. So we'll just kind of crank this and you can really see the way this works. So looking at this, we've got this really dense model now that has these two big glaring issues here. Generally, when you're building your models, you want to try to keep a consistent density across your model. Most cases, it's entirely possible. Sometimes it's not possible. The biggest areas of density in your models are going to be obviously where you're supporting. So you want your supports to be the most dense areas. Now, while technically this is working 
and those are our most dense areas and you can tell the issue is if you can see if you look here you can see how these are much more spaced apart and open whereas everything here is much more clustered and dense so it's subdividing and going across both sides and just creating a really dense nasty mesh that we don't want so we're going to back that off so let's look at this one how does this one work well with subdivisions at one we can just go ahead and kind of crank this guy up and you can see the result we get is our densest area is our main supported area everything else flows back out into a nice clean open geometry so we're not stressing too much about having a ton of geo in one space so we're going to have an actual really clean kind of look to it we'll turn on wireframe here um because it's so dense it's a little hard to see but we'll just back it off a bit you can tell at a lower realm this is where our subdivisions happening like this is where the the density of it because that's where the support is but otherwise the model is generally pretty unaffected everything else is really even and clean this is what we're striving for so that kind of leaves us to ask how do we get to that how do we do this so let's go ahead and do it we're gonna i'm gonna show you both workflows on both of them and then um we'll just talk about how that works so we have our original models we're not going to touch this guy so traditionally the way that i was taught in college which is not right is you just kind of take your insert edge loop tool and you go boom boom and just kind of add your supports throughout and you know you can do this you can also do this with the uh the bevel tool if you want to uh, i just this is the way i was taught and uh, it's not right you know it's not the right way to do it at all but this is what they considered acceptable, which for all intents and purposes, sure, it kind of is. That's how we generally would like quickly just support our edges and call it good. Again, it works, but it's ugly. It's going to muck up your scene. So when we look at a model like this, how do we get this to where we want it? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my corner. So we're going to go to our multi-cut tool and click right here in the center and then right here at the tip that cuts it in half same thing down here cuts it in half okay so we just created a bunch of triangles don't panic it's okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut across so we're going to go right here click right here hold shift and then you can choose where you're going to put it we're going to put it right at like 80 percent then we can do Control shift click to make it evenly go across the model click there and then we're going to do right to here so we can hold shift go to 20 percent because that's going to give us the perfect angle that we're looking for same thing here this will be 80 percent just because we're kind of flipping and then from here you can hold shift oops 80 percent cut so that gives us a nice cut through we're going to go ahead and run that through the rest of the model Just knowing where we're putting these things. And hit enter. Okay, so that gives us our split across. All right. So this is where we can start kind of removing geo that we don't need. But what we want to do first is we're going to go ahead and just kind of complete this support loop. So we're going to do the same thing on the back. Same multi-cut tool. Same percentage. And you can see that like, while it seems like a really complicated way to do things, it's actually really kind of like, it's not as like difficult or time consuming as you would think it is. Especially once you know what you're doing, you'll just be able to run through your models and do these no problem, so. Okay, I'm gonna just continue pulling that through. Oops. And then terminate it. Okay, cool. So we have our geo going through. That's perfect. Now we want to clean this up. So what we need to do, we'll get out of that tool. We're gonna to take this loop and this loop, and we are going to control delete, gets rid of them. Same thing here. Control delete. Now, we can see with this setup right now, if we smooth it, we don't get a perfect smooth, but we're starting to see that support working. So you can see how that corner is actually pulling now. 
So now the only thing we need to do is add our two inner support loops to give that corner some more control. So what we'll do is we'll go mesh tools. You can just do an offset. And you can decide where you want to pin this. Usually with these, since it's a sharp corner, I'll pin it pretty close. So we'll just pin it right there. And then we'll do mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're going to pull one here to support this edge over here. And then the same thing right here. And then last but not least, these ones. And so while that took a little bit more time, you now have a model that is much more efficient topology wise to work with. And so when we're talking about like lowering our scene complexity or lowering our model complexity, this is one way you would like to do that is to go through and make sure that you're cleaning up your topology, making sure that you're terminating as many loops as you can into one loop instead of having hundreds of loops going all over your model because the reality is, is that's gonna create a really dense, inefficient model. So when we look at this, if I go, so we know now if we take both of these and we go mesh and smooth, we'll just do a division of one. If we click on this one, you can see in total, this one has 896 spaces. But if we click on this one, we drop down to 640. So not only did we remove almost 250 faces from the subdivision, we have a much more efficient model. So this is one of the ways you can handle certain topology on right angles, even, even more complex angles, you can still get away with doing something like this. And yes, it does mean a little bit more work, but to have a better result and a more efficient model, that extra work is going to help you more in the long run and be more worth it. And I promise you, you will get just as fast with this as you did with inserting an edge loop or cutting it the way that you used to cut it before. But that is the end of the first video that uh, we're going to do on this channel about topology and about setting up topology for certain things. I'm going to work on different lessons for different pieces of geometry so we can kind of go over the different kind of ways that we can support things and the ways that we can change up topology and fix things. So if you found this video helpful, let me know down below. Let me know if you have any critiques. Maybe you have a better way of doing this. Let me know. I'm always interested in learning how other people do this stuff. But in general, this will give you a good idea on how to start correcting your topology mistakes and making sure that your models are coming out in a fashion that works both in like a production pipeline, but also just keeping your models lighter. <laughs> but with that said, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It does help my channel a lot. I'm going to be making more videos in this series. It'll have its whole playlist on my channel alongside all of my other content. And again, if you'd like to support me or grow the channel, you can either subscribe now on YouTube because that's an option or you can join my Patreon. Both options give you special access to a new channel in my Discord that I'm building out as well as get you producer credit in my videos in the future so so again thank you so much for watching i appreciate you for being here and i will see you all in the next video